Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and we are still discussing on the topic metals and we're looking at how iron is extracted. So we look at extraction of iron, the steps, and then some of the properties of iron. So iron is the most second most abundant metal after aluminium. So it means that it is very commonly found on the earth crust if we compare it with aluminium. And the main ores are ametite, magnetite, and siderite. So I want you to make sure you are able to see their formulas because they are different. They might seem a bit the same because you can see hematite is iron uh, 3 oxide, and then this is iron 4 oxide, as you can see. And siderite is iron carbonate. So make sure you are able to see those differences. So how do we how are we able to test the presence of iron ions in an ore sample? So in the same manner we did with aluminium, we crush the ore into a fine powder and then we add the acid. When we add the acid, it helps to dissolve the parts of the ore that we want and then the excess uh, um, compounds or impurities that do not react with nitric acid are removed. So after that, the filtrate, uh, we had a few drops of sodium hydroxide and then we add excess and then also we add a few drops in another beaker containing the same filtrate, our ammonium hydroxide dropwise uh, until in excess. So you notice that when we react with um, sodium hydroxide, it's going to form a white precipitate, a, a, a brown precipitate, not a white precipitate. And even when we react it with ammonium hydroxide, a few drops, it is also going to give a white precipitate. So these precipitates remain either way if you add excess uh, of, ammon of ammonium solution and also sodium hydroxide. So how do we extract iron? So the extraction of ametite is done through a blast furnace. So we said when we were introducing the uh, metals or the extraction of metals, we said different metals are extracted differently. We have the electrolysis and the reduction method. We said the electrolysis is for the metals that are high in the reactivity series. And then the reductions is the ones that are in the low reactivity series including iron. So today we are going to be using a blast furnace to do the reduction of the ametite to form our iron. So we have the blast furnace, it's usually tall and has a conical um, furnace, usually made of silica, and some of the raw materials that are used, and this is important to note these raw materials, we have the ore itself, we have coke, uh, limestone, hot hair. So remember, coke is used as the main uh, substance that is produces the main uh, reducing agent. The main reducing agent is carbon monoxide, but it is produced by oxidation of carbon or coke to form carbon dioxide, which is further reduced to form carbon monoxide. We'll discuss that later. And then the conditions for this reaction is between temperatures of between 1400 to 1600 degrees Celsius. So, and then the temperatures, remember, as you go up, the top are decreasing gradually, and the top is around 400 degrees Celsius. So, let's look at the reactions that occur in this process. First, we start with crushing and loading. So, the oil is crushed into a powder to increase surface area, and then it is mixed with coke. Note how it's mixed with coke first, and then it's mixed with limestone, and then it's fed from the top, as you can see in the setup. And then the double bell charging system ensures that the furnace can be fed continuously from the top with very little heat loss. So this uh, bell ring helps to prevent the heat from not like uh, being lost into the environment. So when it comes to the preheating of the blast furnace, so hot, hot hair that has been preheated for about uh, 700 degrees Celsius is usually blown into the uh, in the in the bottom of the blast furnace uh, using small pipes. Um, this provides uh, temperature the required temperatures for the reaction to start. So this results into the highest temperatures. Remember there are some reactions that are going to occur here that will increase the temperatures gradually, as we are going to see in a few. 
So the two reducing agents are used, used in this process is coke and carbon 2 oxide as I initially mentioned and carbon 2 oxide is the main reducing agent. So what happens first, coke is burnt in the blast furnace at the bottom of the furnace and when it's burnt it produces carbon dioxide. This causes a great increase in the heat at the bottom. It causes it to increase to around 1600 degrees Celsius because this reaction is very exothermic. So and then now the limestone, also remember we added limestone. Uh, is decomposed in the blast furnace also to give calcium oxide and carbon four oxide. Remember, carbon four oxide now has been produced by the coke and also now by the limestone. So the calcium oxide is used to remove impurities. It reacts with silic silica uh, to form uh, calcium silicate, as we are going to see later on. So the carbon four oxide moves upwards. So we have formed carbon four oxide at the bottom. It starts to move upwards uh, in the blast furnace. And you remember we have carbon uh, coke that is added. So what happens, carbon four oxide reacts with more coke to form carbon two oxide. To this carbon two oxide is the main reducing agent. This is the one that is going to, to be used to reduce the iron oxide. So this occurs at the top part, it's around 700 degrees Celsius, unlike initially where it was occurring in the bottom. So the carbon two oxide and coke reduces uh, the, uh, the oxide and this occurs at a lower like temperatures of around 800 degrees Celsius. Uh, so iron, uh, iron three oxide, this reacts with carbon to form iron and carbon four oxide. And the resulting carbon two oxide is reduced to carbon monoxide. So you see there is a constant production of carbon monoxide because of the coke that is present in the blast furnace. And then uh, further, the iron, uh, iron three oxide is further reduced by the carbon monoxide. But this happens at a lower temperature than the initial reaction. So more iron three oxide is reduced to form iron and carbon four oxide is produced. Remember carbon four oxide again is recycled back to produce more carbon two oxide. So iron produced in both the reduction process is in solid states and it drops, it trickles down in the blast furnace and it changes into molten state because of the very high temperatures. So the molten iron runs at the bottom of the furnace and then it's, it's, it's part of so temperatures at the earth is maintained or at the bottom is maintained at 1400 to 1500 degrees Celsius. So the molten iron usually solidified, solidifies at the base at temperatures around 1400 degrees Celsius. Um, wood, it would solidify, but this doesn't happen because of the impurities present. These impurities usually lower the melting point of iron. So it makes it to be not to turn into solid state, but it remains in molten state. So the impurities, now remember we talked about the limestone that produces uh, calcium oxide. So the impurities, which is mainly silica, reacts with calcium oxide to form calcium silicate. So these are the ones that go at the bottom of the of the blast furnace but they do not mix with iron because they are less dense so they 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 are they cover iron at the top as you can see in the setup so the slag also just the way it behaves helps in the process in that it protects iron from being deoxidized this is a very common uh, examinable question and some of the uses of the slag uh, is used to make uh, lightweight building materials, manufacture cement, uh, manufacture building materials. And then also we have waste gases that are produced. You can also be mentioned uh, some of these gases. We have nitrogen, carbon four oxide, carbon two oxide. Remember carbon two oxide is there. We have ar argon, um, also dust particles, um, those ones I usually have to be removed from the blast furnace. So that's it in terms of the extraction of iron. So you've seen how the blast furnace works and make sure you're able to see each and every step as the temperature increases. It's majorly just a reducing process.
So some of the properties of ion, these are just repetition of what we have done before. So ion has a melting point of around uh, 420 degrees Celsius and boiling point of 907 degrees Celsius. It's a good conductor of heat and electricity. It's ductile and malleable. And some proper chemical properties is that it reacts with air to form iron 3 oxide. It actually forms the hydrated iron 3 oxide, which is rust. So that is the equation for the formation of rust. Uh, so when it's heated in oxygen, it forms the iron 3 oxide. Or triion tetraoxide, not iron 3 oxide, as you can see. Remember, triion tetraoxide is one of the ores, which is magnetite. It reacts with water also, uh, but not so much, uh, but it reacts with steam to form trion tetraoxide. Remember, the activity of water depends on where the metal is on the reactivity series. So iron reacts with steam to form uh, tetraion tetra, tetra tetraoxide and hydrogen gas is given off. It also reacts with chlorine uh, to form iron 3 chloride. Iron 3 chloride is a Sublimes. That's why it's collected on the cooler part of um, the apparatus. All right. And then also the iron 3 chloride hydrolysis, just like aluminium chloride hydrolysis to give hydrochloric acid. So it is important for it to be collected in a dry environment. In reaction with acids, iron reacts with hydrochloric acid to liberate hydrogen and iron 2 chloride. The sulfuric acid to form iron 2 sulfate and hydrogen. And if you were to if you were to use hot concentrated sulfuric acid, it would form sulfur 4 oxide and water and iron 3 sulfate. This is because of the oxidation of concentrated sulfuric acid. So iron reacts also with dilute nitric acid to form uh, nitrogen 4 oxide, ammonia, and ammonium nitrate, and iron 2 nitrate. With warm acid, it gives iron 2 nitrate. So concentrated nitric acid dredges the iron and reacts it because of the formation of the iron oxide as a protective layer on the metal surface, since nitric acid is a very strong oxidizing agent. So these are the uses of iron. Iron is usually used to make alloys. So these uses are mainly uh, concentrated on the alloys. So you can take your time and go through these uses step by step. There's also a chance to look at the notes that have been posted in the site. Make sure you go and check them out and a few questions on uh, extraction of iron. And that concludes the lesson for today. So see you in the next lesson as you look at a different metal. See you then.